So now, without further ado, let's get into the Indian Super League, Alex. We teased it just a little bit last week. For those who are unaware of it, I'm sure there can't be too many now, what exactly is it? And should we be excited about it? Um, yeah, I think so. It's not any old league. Obviously, it's a Super League. So you've got <laughs> eight teams, ten weeks. You've got, you've got the likes of Robert Perez, David Trezeguet, David James, Marco Matarazzi as a player manager, all together for a ten-week period, a big sort of just football tournament, just to really kind of... I don't know, spark things off in, in India. I know a lot of people have been talking about, you know, talking about how it's a sleeping giant and obviously it's got this huge population of 1.2 billion people, 10th largest economy in the world, but I think they're 158th in the world in, in the FIFA rankings. They're around sort of the Kyrgyzstans of, uh, of world football. Not punching their way, are Yeah, they? recently the national team sat their manager because they lost to Palestine. So uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. So this, I think, is kind of partly that, but also partly it's just a big kind of, Exercise a bit like I don't know the Indian Premier League and cricket sort of thing. It's a big glamorous thing. There's lots of cricketers and Bollywood stars involved. Is this is this on your radar, chaps? The Indian Super League. Have you yeah. been across it at all? Yeah, just uh, it's really obviously really ramped up with the media attention it's been getting recently. I find it interesting, the dualities it has with the Major League Soccer connotations, and obviously the A League in Australia. But it's pretty fascinating the way that they suspended. It's the I League. I think is the, the I think that's the official name for. The that's the, other, that's their official kind of top league. Exactly. Yeah. So this is running, not concurrently, but level with that league. They suspended and pushed back the I League until yeah, January. It's, it's, kind of, it's a separate NC. So now it's, this is being played in the off season. Yeah. I think that the hope is that by the time the Super League finishes, everyone's going to be so excited about football, and suddenly the I League's going to kick yeah, off, exactly. and everyone's going to go, yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah potentially, some suspense. of the teams, I think, hopefully, some of the Super League teams will actually go in. The uh, uh, there's talk about franchises or affiliations with certain teams, but at the moment they're very much separate. They are, you know, they are your Super League teams, and they're backed by the Sachin Tendulkar and Ganguly and all, all that, that jazz. Ganguly. Well, there's, there's loads of razzmatazz, that's for sure. Some big names, including David James. Yeah. You're gutted, aren't you? Some of the players you got. Oh, could be, could be Del Piero. Well, David James. Well, yeah, well there was a good player in his own right. Well, yeah, well earlier today, I think it was uh, Marco Matarazzi's Chennai in FC. He's a player manager took on David James's uh, team, the Kerala Blasters. He's also player manager. Uh, it was a 2-1, 2-1 in the end. So, I mean, that's a, that's a, kind of, you know, that's a dream matchup. You wouldn't get that anywhere else in world you football. Can't. It's, it's sort of Thank like God. a retirement home. It's like, it's like sort the of. best exotic marigold hotel for football. <laughs> that's basically <laughs> what we're doing. Right. Put that on the poster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but mean, what what it, did you think of the actual standard itself? Has any, have you had a look at any of the matches or any of the highlights? I know um, it's not broadcasting on UK TV. Well, I was just talking to Paul about this just before we came on, on air, that <clears throat> I've tried to watch it on the official website, but you can't really seem to watch it here. But you do get the nice little advert of the, the, the footballer <laughs> That's the, main thing, isn't the it? footballer jumping out of a glass of milk, like this milky footballer. Which doesn't actually body. happen in the Indian Premier League. That hasn't happened. Well, I, w yeah. I wouldn't know because I, I haven't it's seen it. It's but um, no milk is involved. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I, I can't confirm or deny. It's been cracking. I mean, the, the I've seen the highlight packages they've been putting together is just amazing. Like, it seems I haven't managed to watch a full ninety minutes, but I've seen you know condensed games at twenty minutes, and it's pretty good. Like, surprisingly, for an upstart league, really impressed with the quality. Well, like so a lot far. of people are getting behind it. I mean, I did see an article. I think it might have been written by someone in India saying that. It was great when it started, because it started during the international break, during the Euros, when people weren't too interested. But this was the first weekend where you could watch an ISL match or you could watch Sergio Aguero score four goals you know, That's against, the sticking against point, Spurs, isn't it? which is, and it's still you know, different, they're sort of leagues apart. But in terms of what the Indian public is used to and the quality that they're used to, this is definitely a step up. Like it's, it's not obviously not as high quality as Europe, but it's definitely a lot better than what they're used to. They're getting attendances of, on average, over 30,000 a game. I know Cal Calcutta are getting about 65,000 a game. So something is happening there. Yeah, but the key, the key here, whether it succeeds or fails, I think it's going to be whether you take away these big players who are almost sort of marketing gimmicks. You take those away and will the, the younger Indian players coming through, are there role models for them to look up to who are Indian players? Are the, is the level of football going to be dragged up or is it just going to be a succession of these kind of burnt out 40 year olds who come over, make their money, disappear. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think you'll know that for years to come. I think it's competing against cricket as well. I mean, it's, <coughs> quite, it's quite a big, big monster. I think you were saying before we came on the show about floodlights. It's quite yeah. a big issue. An, is, an issue being that sort of with, with the I-League, uh, a lot of the teams, although there is, a, there is an appetite for football in India. I think there was a stat that 
in the 2008 Champions League final, 67 million people in India watched it. So people, there you go. So people in India do want to watch football and they do enjoy football. But an I League game, teams have stadiums that can hold about 6,000. They struggle to hold them. I mean, they struggle to fill them. A lot of the clubs don't have floodlights, so they play games on uh, like afternoons and midweek, which isn't really conducive to big it's crowds. Ideal, is it? So there's not that much there for people to watch. And, and part I think the ISO is really trying to break the, the the stranglehold of cricket. That really I think it was so I think it was 1983 when India won the, the Cricket World Cup, and that was almost sort of a, a death knell for football in the country, and that cricket just took right, over. Right. But you touched on there, sort of getting young people involved and. A lot of the focus does seem to be on grassroots football. A lot, all, uh, I think there's, it's mandatory that each ISL club puts money into academies and training coaches and that sort of thing. And there's a big section on the website talking about grassroots. I mean, whether they actually go through Sounds with it. Good. And there's a lot of talk about, about numbers and just getting huge amount of kids playing football and eventually you'll get some sort of elite Sounds ones coming out the other end. So, exactly. And also all the teams have got affiliations with... European teams, so I think it's hmm. the Delhi Dynamos are affiliated with Feyenoord, you know, Dutch teams obviously have a great tradition of bringing through youth. I think it's FC Pune FC uh, want to play like Fiorentina because they're affiliated with Fiorentina. Oh, it's quite sweet really. Which Compared is nice. Villages. Exactly. And you know, Ad Atletico de Kolkata uh, affiliated with Atletico Madrid. And it'll go the other way as well when there's people like Mutu who's playing for uh, FC Pune and he'll probably then go to Fiorentina on loan in, in January, everyone's saying. So you sort of get this way that the more burnt out older players will probably then see it as something they could do for three months for now and then come back and, and mix that in. Quite, quite interesting. Go on, sorry. I was just going to say, I'm quite hesitant to keep labelling. This is probably my Major League Soccer like defensive, <laughs> self-conscious nature coming in. I'm, I've been for a number of years conscious about labelling players as burnt out in retirement homes and everything just because of fighting that, that label in America. But if there's one thing that everyone's learnt from that in the States, it's that you can shed that title pretty quickly. If you get a good job in the first couple of years of having players of that stature come over, it ramps up so, so quickly. Like from 2007 onwards in the States, it just took off. So who knows what's going to happen in India, especially with uh, a couple of domestic leagues happening over there. So Yeah, That's and what, yeah. seeing what sort of the legacy is, and <clears throat> also I was going to touch on quickly that Although there's a lot of grassroots stuff with the ISL, the actual Indian Football Federation, the, um, the AIFF, are also they, they're implementing, I think it's a strategic plan from November. Uh, it's a four-year plan. I think they're going to try and get 350,000 participants by 2016 and then another 100,000 each year after. I have done my homework. You have and, to. Um, you are the leading yeah. <laughs> journalist. Did they get uh, to you? The Indian, Did the, uh, the Indian Super League have got to you, haven't they? Brainwashed, <laughs> yeah. Have you got like some sort of ex-pro just on your shoulder exactly. as part of the franchise? I've got ten, ten dilkas around the back just you know, <laughs> feeding, feeding me information okay, through cool. here. Well, we're interested, interested to know, Paul, we'll dig into this a little bit more, but you, you've coached in Mongolia. Is there mm. any sort of sort of comparisons here in terms um, well, of small nations? I mean, India's, India's miles ahead in, in many, many ways, as, as you might expect. But there's a similarity in that idea of trying to put something into a country that, to some extent, is seen as foreign. And in Mongolia, football is still seen as, as something that, that foreigners excel at and that Mongolians can't really do. Uh, and so being brought into Mongolia, I was always wary of being a foreigner coming over, that it's really your responsibility to try and help create something that can be sustainable when you leave. Um, and I think, to be fair, all the players that you have in, in the Indian uh, Super League are doing a very good job of saying that, that that's how they see their roles too. Um, Pires said some quite sweet things about you know how he sees his, his role and it, it's not about a last payday. And I, I, I do believe that for quite a few of these players. And I definitely take the point that you, know, you start with these guys and hopefully in a few years' time some slightly younger players come over. It's more when you see players that have technically retired you know, David James and, and Perez are more or less would be pundits at the moment rather than players um, that y you slightly worry about the level and, and what it suggests. You know, David James had a great save a couple of days ago. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> unbelievable. <laughs> You've been tracking him. Been tracking him. Yeah, but You're can he catch it. a cross? Oh, well, I haven't seen any Most evidence. Most clean in the Premier League, like isn't it? Uh, Although he's played a lot of games. It's true. I mean, that, that's always a good way to get them. Build him up, sheets. knock him down. He's, not, he's pretty awful up front, though. I think we've all learned that. No, that's true. Oh, well, you never know, don't knock it. But I think just sort of the overriding feeling is that I think with a lot of the players there is that it's just this massive untapped resource. And if you look at sort of on the website, there are people leaving comments, that, you know, saying it's a dream come true. I mean, on Facebook, I think the league's got over a million likes. So and it's, it's been quite social media savvy. So they, they've really tried to kind of engage with people. So they're, you know, they're giving it a good go. And I think people are <clears throat> engaging with it. It's just a case of if 
then that excitement that after you know this this ten weeks you've got sort of I think all the teams play each other then you've got two semi-finals two legs each then a, then a grand final and it's whether they can continue that and then next year if it's bigger and better and it'll be, you know, it'll be four five six years before any of these grassroots projects really start to come to fruition if at all and so that would be sort of the real test but if they can get the, put the sort of the foundations in now the groundwork in now then will you continue to keep an eye on it then you seem quite excited will you continue to keep an eye on it of course i'll keep, keep you updated <laughs>